Hi, I'm John. This is my show, Orange is the New Black Cards. So, one of the biggest scammers that I think exists here in the sports card and collectibles community is the great cu curator. Now, if you're just a used car salesman and you're out there hustling and doing your thing, then I don't really got a problem with you scamming people. It's like, okay, everybody, it's like, buyer beware. You knew what to expect when you went to deal with a used car salesman, right? But when you get a used car salesman, um, and he's trying to act like he's like some leader of the church and shit, right? He's like, oh no, I'm the most innocent. I'm the best guy. And he comes up with this scam, because it's a scam. He comes up with this scam called uh, the Gentleman's Investor Code, right? That's his scam. Okay, there's a difference between if you're a used car salesman, if, if you're dealing with a used car salesman and he gets a few hundred bucks out of you, well, that's to be expected. You know that's what he's doing. His job is to try and work you over to try and get the best deal, okay? But when you portray yourself as um, the, 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 I'm the great curator, this is my gentleman's investor code and shit, right? This is how you have to act. When you portray yourself that way and you are actually just a used car salesman, then you're a scammer. That's a scam. You're a scammer, right? So I absolutely detest the great curator's gentleman investor code because he's a scammer. He's not a gentleman investor. He's a fucking scammer. And it's like that thing that's going on in the world right now. They said, you're going to have nothing and you'll be happy. And, that, and it's like, they think that they could take everything from you and scam you. But as long as they do it with a smile on their face and they talk nice and be proper and shit, they think that that justifies them and scamming your fucking ass. It's like, fuck that. Dude, he's a scammer. There's a fucking scum. That's the scum of the world. To portray yourself as one thing and then be doing something else and be stabbing motherfuckers in the back. That's the lowest form of a fucking person there is in the world. And the great curator, let me show you here what a fucking scammer is. Now this has, he cannot be any form of a fucking uh, gentleman investor. He had, there is no code. His code is take advantage of them, of them benefit yourself. If you don't understand, that's his fucking code. Take advantage of them, benefit yourself. That's it. Then he shows everything right here in this deal he does with Flip and Steve. Now look at the other guy over there. He also dealt the Sunday League investor. Okay, I, I guess he knows about soccer. I believe that's what he's talking about. So the guy, the other guy, is the one that's setting up this deal. He's the one that begins this whole deal, saying he says. Uh, Flip and Steve has two Christian Plissett cards on the horizon, one in a PSA 9, one in a PSA 10. The Sunday League investor is willing to pay the asking price of what Steve is asking, $300 for the for the PSA 9. And Steve, that's Steve's asking price on it, and he's willing to pay it. So the great curator comes in and says, okay, no, let me do my fucking great curator scam shit, you know, let me take advantage of him and benefit myself so I can, you know, profit off of this. And that's what he does. There's no gentleman fucking fucking investor code taking place here this is a scam he's a fucking nukes car salesman he's looking to take advantage of you to benefit himself that's all there is to it same thing with the used car salesman if you drive down the road if you got no fucking warranty you drive down on the road and the car breaks down sorry too bad it was running when you left here same thing was with these cards if the fucking person gets hurt and the card goes down in value so sorry too bad that's the risk you took it's a scam they're fucking scammers. So here, let's watch some of this. So I think he said 14.5. I'm not sure what he is meaning there, but I think what he's saying is that the value that he's uh, putting, let me uh, a little bit more so you can see down there on the bottom too. I think that he just said that he believes the true value of those cards is 14.5. I think that's what he actually, because that's not what Steve was asking. So I'm thinking he's saying maybe 14.5 is what he puts the actual value of those two cards together at. Okay. He said there, he said, asking, he said the Sunday League investor is asking me to step in with it. Why would he, why would the Sunday League investor ask him to step in when he's already, he wants the PSA 9. That's all he got out of the deal. And he was willing to pay the $300. Why would he need the great curator to step in and negotiate the deal? He doesn't, that's all. So right there he's scammed. He's scamming us as the public. 
thinking that, that the Sunday League investor asked him to step in. He didn't ask him to step in. The great curator saw an opportunity of which to pull a scam on everybody, of which to take advantage of everybody, and for him to benefit financially. That's what actually happened. Ten. He wants 300 for the nine. He wants 1,000 for the nine, so he's at 1,400. Guys, we're going to do the bundle. We're going to do the bundle, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna, let's see if we can get it for 1,000 bucks. Okay, so it, 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 he was saying 1,400, but actually it's 1,300, I believe that Steve's saying he wants 300 for the nine and he wants 1,000 for the 10, so at 1,300. So if you take off just like 20%, okay, so 1,300, 10% is 130, 260 is 20%. So at 260, that's 1040. Okay, so if the deal comes down to 1040, he's already gotten 20% off. And now remember, they're at a show here, so he's not having to pay for shipping, he's not having to pay for taxes on eBay fees and shit, so he's saving more money that way when the true value of the guy stated that the true value of the cards is fourteen fifty, but now he's trying to get it for a thousand plus he's not having to pay any of the shipping cops he's getting fucking deals and now the problem i got with flip and steve here is flip and steve if you walked into this show and you were just the normal flip and steve if you weren't a dealer and you had done this deal i'd say fine you weren't a dealer, and this is what you have to do with being a dealer. You got to work it this way. But Flip and Steve, for some reason, he forgot you're a dealer at this show. You were a dealer. Your your job is to not settle for twenty percent less than or, or more less than comps when you're the freaking dealer. Your job is to go out and wheel and deal and see what you can get for the card. And if nobody's willing to pay what you believe the card is worth, then you take the shit home. That's how it works. Like, did you forget, Flip and Steve, that you were a dealer at this show? You wanted to make a little good television and get a new friend, buddy? Let uh, Greg Curator fuck you in the ass and take your fucking money? Because that's what he fucking did. There's a great quote from the comedian George Carlin. It says, the guy who created the phrase buyer beware was probably bleeding out the ass. Yeah, Flip and Steve didn't get tenderized. Flip and Steve got fucked in the ass. He said, what are you willing to, he said, I'm willing to pay 300. Well, that's the asking price of what Flip and Steve was asking was 300. So he's like, okay, well, if you're willing to pay full price, let me see if I can take advantage of this, my deal. And see what he says there at the bottom? He says, yeah, you can read it there. It says, let's see if I can take advantage of the deal. So is this a gentleman, is this a gentleman's investor code or is this a, a scammer? looking to take advantage of, of the Sunday League investor and Flip and Steve and then the guy he ends up selling the card to. He just took advantage of three people and he has the nerve to come out here and call himself a gentleman investor? Fuck that shit. I'm fucking sick of this bullshit, fake fucking nice guy fucking bullshit in the world. It's like, and I don't mind that these people are scammers. What really pisses me off is that the public falls for it. And somebody like Flippin' Steve, who's fucking actually smart and knows what the fuck he's doing, and he let himself get bent over and fucked in the ass by a fucking scammer? Fuck. Okay. All right, guys. Let's see if this works. Let's move this. But we're working on, on Flippin' Steve here. This guy's a professional flipper, okay? Just like his name. So you don't get the name Flippin' Steve without being really good at negotiating, so. No, that's wrong. He's not good at negotiating. Flipping Steve is not. What he has shown here is that he's not good at negotiating. What Flipping Steve actually does have a talent, and he knows how to spot talented players. He understands the market of the card market. He knows when the markets are hot and when the markets are cold. So he knows when to buy low, and he'll have an opportunity to sell lot high. Flipping Steve is very good at that. Like, I'm not knocking Steve at all. Flipping Steve has those skills. But what Flipping Steve showed here is that he was not good at being a dealer and getting the highest price for your card and he was not good in a negotiation tactic when it happened on the fly he folded he did not fucking do good here and now he says oh I did good I made money you did not make money you left way too much fucking money on the table when you were a dealer at this show if the guy bought the card here from the great curator why wouldn't he have come and bought it from you then you could have given that guy a better deal then everybody would have been happy you would have made more money he would have paid less money that would have been the way but no you got to fucking bring in all these other middlemen and leave so much meat on the bone that the dude fucking just takes advantage of you flipping Steve 
like, that's what I keep saying. Did you forget you were a fucking dealer at this show, Steve? Dude, he's not paying fucking taxes, no fucking shipping expenses. He didn't have to worry about any of that stuff. And you're here giving him these great fucking deals like you're just some Joe Schmo walking in off the fucking street? Fuck. Let's see. Let's see what we can get out of him, okay? You can't, you can't really tenderize beef jerky, okay? It's already, it's already tough. Okay, so three three hundred and a thousand. Flipping Steve was looking for thirteen hundred. You know, like he said, the one card is he's saying three hundred, and the other guy's willing to pay the three hundred and shit, right? And when the great curator gets a deal, does he cut the other guy a little bit break because he was the one who got this whole thing, and he's his friend, and he got a good deal? Maybe cut him a little break. No, he doesn't cut him any fucking deal. He doesn't cut him in on the fucking deal at all. He takes it all for himself, which is like ultra disgusting. He has no right to fucking call himself a gentleman investor to come in here with this gentleman investor fucking bullshit code. Let me make a proposal for you, okay? Let me give you 300 on this, 600 on this, 900. It's like, okay, so 300 on this, 600 on this. It's like, dude, because you're giving me 300, you're claiming, oh, that's full price. It's like, dude, you can't bend me over on the other one. Oh, I'll give you full price on the 300 one. No, no. If you wanted to come in like that, you could have said, okay, well, I'll give you full price for the, he's asking a uh, thousand on the one, right? So if he would have said, I'll give you full price, the thousand on the one, and then came back and said, but I want this one for a hundred. We want a really good deal because we're giving you this full price on the big card, right? Then that would have been 1100. Still, Steve would have came out better. See, that would have been better. And see how it sounds right. Okay, well, I'm going to give you your full price on the 1000 but we want the deal on this one, and we want it for 100 so that brings it to 1100 That would have been a little bit better, but that's it doesn't end up there. Steve only ends up getting 1020 out of this deal. So I give you your price on this, and then I'm just basically 2x on this multiplier. Do 1,020 so we both feel like we won. It's like, dude, you didn't win, Steve. You lost. You, you, it's like, oh, dude, you're gonna feel like you won? Dude, do you see that fucking, the necklace thing, the dealer tag hanging around your neck? Did you forget that you were a fucking dealer? The dealer, you wait for the opportunities to come up to your table. You went out searching to get rid of these cards and did you really need that money? Did you need to get rid of that those cards? Is was it so important? I don't think so. You fuck you fucked up here, Steve. You messed up on this one bad. You got played, dude. And then then the great curator videotapes it and puts it on his channel so he owns your fucking image now. He owns this shit and he's making more money off of you. Jesus Christ. Are you good with that? He asked his friend, are you good with that? Well, dude, the guy was always, that guy didn't get any deal. He was always paying 300. Are you good with that? He didn't have anything to do with the deal. He was paying full price and he was doing the right thing. There was no, are you good with that? <laughs> Trying to fucking full Steve Moore and shit. Right, yeah, so 1020. Steve took over 20% discount. Steve gave him, it's like, you're going to leave some meat on the bone. Not 20 fucking percent when you're going dealer to dealer. And well, then what happens? Then the great curator comes right back instantly. Like I said, flipping Steve should have fucking worked that fucking deal. Because the great curator then comes instantly back. And he makes, and he sells the cards to, at, at the correct price. And now watch how he's working this guy. He's not cutting this guy any deal. Now this card's the greatest card in the world and shit, right? He's going to get the best value for it and shit. This is how quick he flipped it, which shows how bad of a fucking, if he flipped it at the same show for that kind of profit, Steve, you were at the show, you were a dealer. That is, what the fuck? How did you forget that? How did you forget that? Pulisic, he, Jason wants his Pulisic PSA 10. I would have fun with these. Um, I would ask 
250 trade value on this, so that'd be a 950 for this. Okay, so 250 trade value plus 950 cash, okay? And so he got the card for 10, or it was 1020 total, so he's only into that card at 720. He's only into it for 720, and now he's pulling off a deal. He's trying to get a deal at uh, 1200, which he ends up getting just a little bit less than that. But let's say let's say 1200, because actually the two cards that he got the uh, the 250 for, he's going to sell them for more than that. So even though he took a little bit off, he's going to sell those two cards for more. So in reality, he's getting 1200. He's getting 1200 deal on the one card. Steve only got 1020 for both fucking cards. Jesus Christ, so he's only in, so Greg Curator's into this one card <clears throat> at uh, $720. So at 50% increase on 720, because you're looking at 350, 360 uh, at 1080. So that put him at 10, at 1080 would be, so let's say 1100, $1,100. If he gets $1,100, then that's a 50% increase that he just made in minutes and shit. That's what I'm saying. It's like, dude, flipping Steve, if he was able to make a 50 fucking percent profit in a fucking short period of time in the fucking same day and shit, that means you fucked up, flipping Steve. That's not leaving meat on the bone. That's bending over and taking it up the ass is what you did. And, and who bends you over and take, puts it up your ass? Not, the gentle, not a guy who's got a gentleman's investor code. No, hell no. That's a scammer. That's a fucking scammer. No right to call. He has no right to walk around talking this gentleman investor code when he's scamming everybody. And after he pulled the deal off, that the other guy, the Sunday League investor, laughed and said, "Okay, now I only pay two fifty, right?" And he said, "No, no, you pay three hundred. So he didn't cut him back in on any of the deal. When the other guy is the one who fucking created the whole deal, I think I ran over that part. But that's what happened. He even said, "Okay, I pay two fifty now." He's no, no, you pay three hundred. So even scam the guy right there working with them, the guy who set the whole deal up, didn't cut him any fucking breaks. This guy's got the nerve to call himself a fucking gentleman investor. It's ridiculous. 950 cash. So even at, at uh, 900, he's still fucking, uh, he's still over 50% profit and shit. He's still, so I mean, dude, he's, he's just killing it. Okay, 900. So just to let you know, the upside on this card is that it is a U.S. card. There's the US car US salesman. Card, national card. Okay, very low pop, pop four. Yeah. Um, and we are going into the World Cup season, so I think there's a lot of upside on this. I do like these two cards. They are very unique, um, so they do appeal to me. Um, so I can try to meet you in the middle. Uh, 925 on this. Yeah, do you see the car salesman tactics? No, no trying to give a deal. He's just flat out car salesman. I'm trying to get as much as I can. So that's all I got to say here. Just clearly showing you the great curator is no form of any kind of fucking gentleman investor. He's a bend you over and fuck you in the ass guy who wants to take advantage of you so he can profit as much money as he can for himself.